uh, discuss about uh, collaborative robot and uh, or popularly known as cobot and the most part of this lecture note is uh, prepared based on a iso standard on the same topic of cobot and then it will be followed by a few applications uh, which are taken from a universal robot uh, white paper and a couple of case studies from our own research so we'll first look at the history of cobot which is not very old then we will look at a few definitions uh, from the iso uh, document and as a since iso is a un organization and we are also un members so when we define these terms like industrial robot uh, or collaborative workspace we need to follow these uh, iso definitions then we will uh, look at uh, the categories of collaboration uh, <coughs> the different scenarios so we will first look uh, take a step back and look at the similar collaborative sim scenario uh, that has been studied under computer supported collaborative work and uh, then we look at the similar uh, classification in cobot and the, then the main part of the presentation we look at uh, maintaining safe distance from the cobot and again we will take help from the iso document which is a uh, very precise and uh, detailed description of uh, the requirement of safe distance requirement from a uh, operator and finally we look at applications and case studies so the term cobot first appeared uh, in this us patent so uh, it, if any of you are particularly working on cobot you may uh, look at this particular patent document which you can download from uh, google and uh, it's uh, invented by professors Edward Colgate and Michael Peskin of uh, Northwestern University. And uh, the definition they use in the patent document is an apparatus and method for direct physical interaction between a person and a general purpose manipulator controlled by a computer. And it was uh, resulted from a 1994 General Motors uh, initiative. So uh, in that respect, uh, this is not a very old concept. Now we will uh, look at some definitions. And again, as I mentioned that uh, when we will, uh, we colloquially use all this term in our papers, reports, documents, but please be aware of these definitions. And I copied them forward in from the ISO document. So an industrial robot is an automatically controlled reprogrammable multipurpose manipulator programmable in three or more access, which can be either fixed in place or mobile for use in industrial automation applications. And then it is followed by a few uh, additional notes. And the industrial robot system is any system comprising of the industrial robot. And in below you will see that uh, ISO reference. And I will uh, share these uh, ISO reference uh, definitions with you. So even if you do not uh, memorize it right now, you can look out in this uh, particular document. And similarly, the ISO standard also defined uh, this various mode of operations like automatic mode, where the, the robot control system operates in accordance with the task program automatic operation collaborative operation in which uh, uh, purposely designed robots work in direct cooperation with a human within a defined workspace. And the collaborative workspace is within the safeguarded space where the robot and the human can perform tasks simultaneously during production operation. So it's uh, important to understand that uh, the collaborative workspace definition consists of the term safeguarded space. So the space has to be safeguarded before using a collaborative robot. And also they mentioned that uh, the task has to be performed simultaneously. And finally, with this uh, background of definitions, a collaborative robot or cobot is a robot that can or capable for use in a collaborative operation. And the collaborative operation where purposely designed robots work in direct co cooperation with a human within a defined workspace. So, that's how the context and the collaborative robot has been defined. Now, what are the different use cases of a collaborative robot? So uh, here we will take one step back from the 
robot domain to the computer supported collaborative work domain. So uh, CSCW domain, it's characterized by the situation, um, characterized by the situation where multiple users are interacting together. So here we are not talking about robots, but from a single user situation, we are talking about multiple users and there are uh, here are some examples of situations like presently I am presenting, you are listening, like e-learning, emoting situation. We can be cooperating together in a design space uh, with a big display or we can cooperate with an email. Then we can compete simultaneously in a multiplayer game or we can share like social network, video chat, etc. And it is generally uh, difficult to construct a predictive model of interaction and controlled experiment on CSCW works because multiple players are uh, simultaneously uh, interacting and uh, the traditional modeling work or prediction, the predictive model or controlled experiment, they work with a single uh, computing agent and a single human, but it's not impossible, but it becomes difficult to predict or simulate such a situation where multiple uh, agents are simultaneously performing or interacting. So a basic classification of CSCW work is uh, based on the time and space. On the y-axis, we plot the space and in the x-axis, the sorry, the y-axis, we uh, place the time and the x-axis, we place the space. If the agents or participants are co-located, uh, and they are synchronously communicating. It's like a classroom meeting room. And if they are asynchronously communicating, that means uh, one is uh, doing something and another may respond later. That is something like a multiplayer game or project scheduling. And when the players or participants are not uh, specially co-located at the same place, like a remote collaboration, if it is synchronous, it's like a video conferencing, like now we are doing. And when it is asynchronous, that is like email or teleconference like that. So this space and time based uh, classification we also adopt for uh, collaborative robot related work. So here are some covert situations. One is coexistence where human and robot work alongside each other without a fence, but with no shared workspace. So they will not share workspace, but they will do something uh, together towards a common goal. And sequential collaboration is human and robot are active in shared workspace, but their motions are sequential. They do not work on a part at the same time. So say someone is doing something, giving it to the robot, it is doing something else. They are not sharing the work piece. In case of cooperation, robot and human work on the same part at the same time with both in motion. So th this is the most uh, typical case and here we have to be most careful about the safeguarding or keeping safe distance or the most challenging situation. And responsive collaboration is the robot response in real time to movement of the human worker that the human is doing something and in response to that the ro robot is only responding otherwise it's not doing something. So here also you can see that there we can do some sort of prediction that if something goes wrong that if the human goes still the robot will not respond. But the third situation is the this cooperation situation that we will look into detail in the subsequent slides because here both the robot and the humans they are sharing workspace they are sharing work piece also and that's happening simultaneously. This is a typical uh, situation so on the top left uh, you can see a video which uh, Vinay just recorded yesterday and here you can see a typical situation that where the robot and the human are moving simultaneously and uh, we are uh, recorded we recorded it for a small scale robot to just to keep both the robot and human safe but it illustrates that uh, what can be a similar situation when the human and robots they are cooperating. So this uh, particular ISO standard is 10218-1 and XB. It uh, defines the protective separation distance marked by ASP by this particular formula. And it, the formula consists, as you can see, six part. The last three parts are more or less constant or uh, they can be predicted based on the minimum uh, 
distance required and uh, proud knowledge about uncertainty of the motion. And this remains constant uh, during uh, the when the robot and uh, hand are moving. Maybe there may be some variability uh, due to this uh, uncertainty in movement. But the pre uh, first three term is H, S, R, and S, S. We have to look into further details. So S, P, T, 0. This is the at a particular time at the present or current time. It's the protective distance or separation distance at the time of T0 that when I am measuring. It consists of the protective separation distance attributable to the operator's change in location. So in the top left, you can see that uh, the hand is moving. So the hand movement contribute to SH. And SR is the contribution to the protective separation distance attributable to the robot systems reaction times that the robot is moving. Now these two you can see in the top left corner video that uh, one is a robot, one other is human. Now the SS is the contribution to the protective separation distance due to the robot system stopping distance. So uh, see for this uh, small desktop robot, if we uh, tell it to stop, it will uh, almost immediately stop. But when we are talking about an industry grade big robot, it takes some time or take some distance before it completely stop. And we should take it into consideration that when we are calculating the separation distance, it's very similar to you can find an analogy from automotive domain that uh, many countries, they uh, almost in every countries, we have something called a two seconds or three seconds rule that you should uh, maintain. Uh, in UK, it was like that, that you should maintain a two seconds uh, distance from the previous vehicle. And if it is uh, raining or slippery road, it should be doubled that you should maintain a four seconds distance from the uh, previous vehicle. And the reason that uh, it takes two seconds for the driver to react and stop the vehicle. So if we keep a two seconds uh, distance, then we know that uh, this is the stopping distance of the vehicle. And if the previous vehicle ab abruptly stop or do something, we have enough time to react to bring the ego vehicle into stop before something wrong happens. So similar type of uh, notion here that SS is the contribution that when we told or issued the stop command that stop from that, the time duration or the distance the robot traveled before it stopped. And then the finally the last three variables, as I mentioned, that these are mostly state constants is the inclusion distance, the distance that a part of the body can include into the sensing field before it is detected. And ZD is the position uh, uncertainty in the operator in the collaborative workspace. And similarly, ZR is the position uncertainty of the robot system. That uh, what we uh, we cannot tell it by there may be some uncertainty in the body movement or the sensing technology or the robots <coughs> movement and so. And mostly these three terms will stay uh, constant. So now we will look at uh, these parameters one by one that how we calculate SH. So SH is calculated uh, by this integral from the present time to the reaction time of the robotic system plus the stopping time of the robot. And VH is the direct speed of the operator in the collaborative workspace in the direction of the moving part of the robot and can positive or negative depending on whether the separation distance is increasing or uh, decreasing. So if it is, Increasing then uh, if it is positive, that means uh, I am taking my hand away from the robot. And if it is uh, negative, that means the separation distance is decreasing. That means I am taking my hand towards the robot. And <coughs> SH is the contribution of the human operator to the separation distance. And I have to integrate this velocity. So by integration of the velocity, I will get the distance and how long I have to integrate. It is the time of the robot's reaction system. That uh, in, uh, time is required for detection of operator's position, processing of the signal, activation of a robot stop. But excluding the time, it takes the robot to come to a stop. So in a later example, you will see that uh, in a particular case study, we are using uh, Google Media Pipe to detect hand uh, separate hand position in the robot's walking space. So this is the time that the 
system takes detect the head position or a body part and activate the robot stop command and ts is the time it takes for the robot to stop from the activation of the robot stop command to the actual stop so in case of a very smaller robot this is almost near to zero or instantaneous but for a bigger robot uh, it will be a positive time which we should take into consideration so if we cannot monitor monitor vh or do not uh, have a apparatus to accurately measure vh with respect to t the iso standard tell that we will as vh and then the integration convert into a simple multiplication that we have to multiply this robot reactions time and stopping time by 1.6 which makes us the formula uh, easier and then we will look at to the next contributor to the safe distance that is the sr or the robots reaction time before the stop command is issued and very similarly it is also calculated with this integral that vr is the directed speed of the robot in the direction of an operator in the collaborative workspace and can be positive or negative depending on whether the separation distance is increasing or decreasing very similar calculation as the vht and we have to integrate it up to the robot's reaction time because for the human operator we have to integrate or consider this uh, ts also <clears throat> but for the robot operation we will only consider this robot's reaction time because for this ts or stopping time we have the other variable ss in this case also that there may be a situation that where you are not monitoring the robot speed so if the robot speed speed is not being monitored the system design shall assume that vr is the maximum speed of the robot and when we control a robot uh, we <clears throat> give instruction to the robot with our this even with the small uh, desktop robot that we use we can put a limit on its maximum acceleration and maximum velocity so if we are not measuring vr we will uh, give it the maximum value to ensure that uh, it will never exceed that limit if the robot speed is mo being monitored the system design may use the current speed of the robot but shall account for the acceleration capability of the robot in the manner that reduces the separation distance the most so even if you say monitoring the robot speed it may happen the robot will act actually accelerate so in that case you you will be uh, underestimate the separation distance so in that case if even if you are monitoring you that's why the integral formula that you have to uh, take the acceleration into account if a safety related speed limit is in effect the system design may use this speed limit if the limit is applicable to the part of the robot under consideration so if there is a speed limit we can use that and if we use a constant speed instead of a function of time then we can just uh, like the previous case we can multiply this uh, vr at the current time with the robot's reaction time to estimate this uh, separation distance uh, for the robot's reaction time and finally we will uh, measure the robot stopping time so for that we will <coughs> have to integrate this robot's uh, stopping speed from uh, t0 plus uh, tr that means robot's reaction time up to the robot when the robot is completing to the complete stop that t0 plus tr plus ts and um, <clears throat> the vs is the speed of the robot in the course of stopping and this is happening from the course of the from the activation of the stop command until the robot is completely halted and similarly if the robot speed is not being monitored the system design shall assume that this integral is the robot stopping distance in the direction that reduces the separation distance the most and uh, if the robot speed is being monitored the system design may use the robot stopping distance from that speed applied in the direction that reduces the separation distance the most so so that we never underestimate the stop um, the safe distance so we will always use the <coughs> velocity component towards the operator's hand or which is uh, reducing the separation distance so we this whole story can become much more clearer with this picture so here you can see so this is one event that when we are telling the robot that you stop movement and this is another event 
when the stopping operation is beginning. So this is here you can see there is a time gap. So uh, again, when we are con doing a prototype with desktop fixed base small robot, this is almost near to zero. But in a bigger industrial grade robot, this will be non-zero. And this is the time gap from stopping begins to stopping ends that the time the robot take to actually stop its movement. So again, it will be very small with a small robot, but for a bigger robot, it will have it will be considerable. And this time is somehow depend on the control mechanism that is sending the command to the robot, while this time will depend on the actual kinematics of the robot or actual mechanics of the robot, that how big it is, uh, what is the endurance, uh, or what is the payload capacity, etc. And that's why you can see this is much bigger than this one. That uh, So this is the time I sense something may go wrong. We have to stop movement. This is when the robot actually know that it has been asked to stop movement. And this is where it stopped. So here you can see that this is the robot speed. It's staying constant till the stopping process actually begins. And then it started to reduce. And then it becomes zero when the stopping ends. While the human operated speed, we are assuming that it will stay constant. Although we may argue that uh, if the person actually see that the robot is moving towards this, probably he will also take corrective action to increase separation distance. But so that we do not underestimate the separation distance, we consider the VH is constant. And this part of the separation distance, so here we are plotting the separation distance with respect to time. So this part is uh, ST. So this is uh, the robot is uh, moving and uh, <clears throat> the separation distance is decreasing as if the uh, it's coming towards the human operator. And here you can still see the slope is same because although here we issued the stop command, but the robot has not yet sensed the stop command. So it's still moving in the same direction and doing the same thing. So the slope is same as the previous uh, time step, time case, and then the robot knows that now it has to stop. So the slope has decreased of this line, but still the separation distance is reducing because the robot is still moving. And at this point, the robot actually stopped movement. And we have to make sure that this distance is equal to C plus ZD plus ZR, which is the minimum intrusion distance uh, that is allowed considering or including the uncertainty in movements of the robotic arm at the human operator. And this is so this stands the actual formula. So next we will look at a few uh, of industrial applications of the robot and uh, this uh, particular white paper which I will share with you later uh, by Universal Robots. It's uh, identified a few uh, operations and interestingly many of you are already working on such operations. One is the pick and place operation where the manual pick and place tasks are often the most uh, repetitive task and also uh, increase boredom, fatigue and may increase chances of accident. And a cobot or collaborative robot will be very suitable for such an operation. Similarly, machine tending, uh, it's uh, can reduce fatigue or the requirement of manpower and even uh, during uh, off work hour also the cobot can tend the machine. And <clears throat> the robot can also be uh, trained for tending machine pretty quickly. Packaging and palletizing is uh, another such operation. Automatically packaging tasks are similar to generic pick and place, increase productivity over multiple shifts. And uh, Few more examples are process tasks like gluing, dispensing, or welding. So this is a particular example of a robot-based uh, welding torch. And um, um, here, how why the cobot becomes uh, useful because the task often includes a repetitive but uh, very similar or exact method to be followed in the, the form of uh, following a fixed path or doing a very uh, same thing accurately multiple times, which may turn difficult for a human operator or it may require a lot of training for the human operator. If you consider like the welding task that uh, it requires considerable amount of training to train a human operator to do the welding um, accurately every time, but it can be uh, trained to a cobot pretty easily. And uh, that way the 
it can improve the safety as well as productivity of the human operator. Similar examples are finishing tasks like polishing, grinding, debugging, which again has a very fixed definition or uh, work description, which uh, may be boring or repetitive for the human operators, but it uh, will be easy for the cobot to undertake and the human can supervise the activity and quality inspection and there are uh, plenty of uh, research uh, use cases going on even uh, in our smart factory of uh, also and we also worked on is the defect detection uh, pcb inspection etc so in all those cases uh, cobot along with uh, an appropriate computer vision or ai module that can uh, take part in the quality inspection part and just to uh, tell you from the since we will also look at some part of computer vision in the later part of the course that uh, it's become easy to uh, develop something on a 2D plane when I can p place a piece of object and then uh, take picture and uh, do analysis. But when the it's become a 3D object and we have to look it at all surface, then it becomes difficult and it becomes even more difficult when the particular object in, in question has an amorphous shape. So that becomes more challenging for the computer vision task and the cobot holding the object in an appropriate way in front of the camera will be very useful. Now from this industrial robotic application, I will just uh, spend one slide on this uh, application because see here, it, uh, this type of applications come under this generic name of social robotics, but in all these cases, the situation is same that the human is sharing it a workspace with a, a robotic agent or an automated agent. And although these type of situations are not come under the purview of a cobot situation because the term cobot is very much uh, very much uh, described or related to industrial grade robot where someone is performing a task. But with advent of uh, robotic agents, these collaborative uh, robots, uh, they can also become very common for social robotic situation. And <clears throat> in later, you will see a couple of case studies where we also work on that. But there are many other research groups. Uh, they are all looking at social robotics application. And uh, so far, this uh, the similar type of safe distance calculation or uh, these uh, applications of this cobot uh, principles, they are not very well studied in this type of applications. And in this context, we can identify some of the cobot research topics. Probably some of you are already working on it. Like, of course, the first one is the safe distance maintenance, and we can take help from various AI and computer vision algorithms to implement this ISO standard. But then there are some other use cases or possible use cases considering the social robotics into account is efficiency versus empathy that when we are talking about industry grade applications, we are always talking about productivity, efficiency, which are very much uh, relevant in the industrial cobot context. But if we look into social robot context, they are also the human is sharing workspace with a robotic agent. And perhaps their empathy is equally more important or equally important as efficiency. And similarly, the compromise between automation versus collaboration that how much activity the robot should be do itself and which the human should instruct it. For example, uh, will the human itself instruct the robot about the navigation path or the robot will automatically navigate or whether the human will uh, tell the robot to stop or whether it will have automatic sensing mechanisms to stop. Similarly, for pick and place that whether the robot automatically detect the particular object to be pick and place and or the human will instruct it to pick and place and each of these use cases have their own advantage disadvantage so of course when the human is instructing the operation will be more accurate but at the same time it may be a bit repetitive for the human and maybe time consuming on the other case if the robot does everything itself um, it uh, will be perhaps more efficient, but at the same time, it may compromise the accuracy based on the accuracy of the computer vision algorithm or the AI algorithm. So after that, we will move to two case studies, but uh, here uh, I will uh, stop for a moment.
So does anyone have any question? Okay, then I will uh, move to the case study section. Uh, 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 yes. Yeah. So, uh, regarding the safe protection distance, so uh, how are the like the reference points defined, like on the robot and the operator? Like, is it the end effector or uh, the reference points between the dist for the distance measurement? Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. So, the most measurements they are based on the end effector position, but it does mention about other robotic parts. So, when you will uh, look at the ISO document, you will see that it also mention about the other parts of the robot, which may include in the collaborative workspace. So, but the most calculation is done based on the end effector position. Okay. And also the ISO document, uh, I didn't cover that in this lecture, but the ISO document when I will share, you may check. It also has a uh, good analysis of the pain sensation in various body part and the standard is adapted based on the various body part which are uh, more susceptible to pain sensitivity. Any other question? All right, so we'll move to the two case study section. So this first case study uh, will uh, take uh, this uh, Vinoy and me, we worked on that, that we developed a guest controlled robot. So that we developed in 2020, but later on uh, we worked on to make it safe so that if a hand comes within the robot's workspace and here by robot, we mean the fixed space desktop robot. But even if the uh, hand was, hand come or the most uh, more precisely the palm comes within the robot's workspace, we compared two algorithms to uh, make users safe and so that the robot doesn't uh, come near or cross a minimum separation distance from the any body movement part. And the paper was presented uh, in last December in this um, International Co uh, Conference on Advanced Robotics, which is technically co-sponsored by this IEEE Robotics and Autonomous Society. So uh, this is the context of the work that if uh, there is a obstacle or here the palm, how we can, uh, how the robot can navigate uh, circumspecting it. So a very uh, naive and uh, intuitive algorithm will be the robot will uh, draw an arc, keeping the safe uh, distance from the um, hand and uh, the, we will uh, take a measurement at the center point of the hand. Uh, we mostly consider this the knuckle on the middle finger and we will keep a safe distance from here so that the, from the fingertip also the robot uh, end effector maintains this distance and the robot uh, end effector will move in this arc. So this algorithm is very easy to implement, understand and it will ensure that the robot end effector will always remain away from the hand. And when I will explain this algorithm, first I will explain it with a fixed obstacle position and then I will show that how we can uh, update it when the hand is moving. But here is we also looked at another uh, artificial intelligence based algorithm based on the Markov decision process. And they are what we can do that instead of following this arc, we can just make only a single direction change that of course the when the robot will move in this arc, it uh, has to go a bit uh, slower than it can move at the straight line. So we can just move it in one straight line, make one direction change and bring it back to the target. Even then also it will keep the safe distance from the hand. So we compare these algorithms and try to find this optimum navigation path. Now we also looked at the uncertainty in the robotic movement, like in the previous case, you see that we have the ZD and ZR parameters. And how we model this uncertainty, we considered that this is a robotic agent and at any point of time, it can move into these eight possible directions. And uh, we considered that uh, when we are telling the robot to go on this direction, there may be non-zero probability that the robot will go into the neighboring directions on here and here. Similarly, if we tell the robot to go here, the robot may go here and here like that. We can also uh, increase uh, the accuracy more by uh, modeling the uncertainty in the polar coordinate space by R and theta. But for this particular example, we consider this 
a direction motion. Next, what we did that here you can see that uh, we can detect the hand and various uh, feature points on hand, and uh, we used Google Media Pipe to detect the hand position by putting a, a camera over the robot agent. And we discretize the whole collaborative workspace into a 2020 grid or 400 grid. And where the hand is located, we put there a very big negative values. And where we want the robotic agent to reach, there we put a positive values. And then we used uh, uh, AI algorithm called Markov decision process and the value iteration algorithm. So the Markov decision process takes this grid into account and it uh, the value iteration algorithm outputs a policy that uh, what I should do at a specific point of time. And when we execute the policy from the start position of the robot, it indicates the navigation path. So in this picture, we do not have any uncertainty. We kept the uncertainty to zero for the robot uh, navigation. Here we increase the uncertainty and accordingly the red area is spread so that the robot end defector still keeps safe distance from it. And accordingly the navigation path adapted and when the uncertainty is even more, the navigation path is keeping even a further distance from the obstacle because the robot movement is uncertain. And then we tested it for uh, various degrees of uncertainty through simulation and in this application we can mark these blocks that where we do not want the robotic agent to be. And here you can see when there is no uncertainty, it almost move in a straight line. But uh, when the uncertainty is higher, it goes like in this uh, rectangular fashion because it wants to stay away from this uh, hand uh, due to the uncertainty in the robot's motion that even it's trying to go here, it may venture on the other side. So it's kept further away from the hand position. And we also uh, considered situations when the hand is moving and we consider the hand movement is uh, kind of elastic in nature. That means the user can take his hand uh, in one direction and then bring it back. So the algorithm uh, slightly modified the basic evaluation algorithm and added uh, utilities. I mean, utility is a long term reward, so uh, you can find further details on the utility and rewards in a separate lecture on Markov decision process. But for this lecture, I am not uh, discussing in detail about the underlying calculations of utility and rewards. But <clears throat> in this case, uh, you can see this is the initial hand position and this is the navigation path. And now in the second position, the hand is moved in this direction. But we uh, remember the hand movement is elastic. So uh, we consider that during movement of the robotic arm, the hand may return to its previous position. So even it was possible that robot can go this way, but it still preferred to go that way and put some red marks here, remembering the hand may return in this position. So that way it can also, the algorithm can remember past position. And if uh, the algorithm is implemented in some other use cases where there are multiple obstacles, the robot can percolate among these multiple obstacles. So after implementing this uh, particular algorithm, we undertook some simulation results and we increased the probability and uncertainty of movement and measured the safe distance from the robotic hub. And as we expected, the safe distance kept on increasing as the uncertainty in the robot's movement increased. And then we also do some simulation study by actually putting the hand in various positions, but we didn't move the robot, just put the hand in different position. And uh, wherever the hand we put, we uh, marked them in red uh, or we marked them as obstacles and uh, simulate the robot's position for different values of source and target. And we, by comparing the markup decision process uh, based algorithm with this geometry based uh, navigation algorithm, we find that the Markov decision process based algorithm statistically significantly reduced the distance the robot needs to move without compromising safety. That means maintaining safe distance from the hand. And then we undertook an experiment with actual users. So we use these OptiTrack camera systems for accurately tracking the hand movement and also for tracking the robot movements. Uh, and these are uh, very accurate motion tracking system. 
and here you can see the OptiTrack output. So this is the hand and this is the robot robot pin or the end effector. And we measure the distance between the hand and the robot end effector. And we uh, give the user some reachability task. That means uh, instruct the robot to bring the end effector here using this uh, video see-through interface. We discussed about the video see-through interface in the ARVR lecture earlier. And this is one particular uh, example video of the task that uh, here you can see the detection by <coughs> here and the robot end effector. It's uh, kind of circum spec or uh, avoid the hand position. And then we also evaluated it with uh, our end users. And here we used uh, webcam based guest tracking algorithm. So in this particular lecture, this uh, I guess tracking part is not uh, so relevant, but the users with uh, severe disability, they instructed the robot through their I guess. And it uh, reached towards the target. So we undertook this user study and we measured the task completion time in second. Of course, the able-bodied user could do it much faster than users with severe speech and motor impairment. And uh, with practice, uh, both user group improved the task completion time. And during all this trial, we measured we uh, measured the minimum distance, and it was uh, the robot uh, end effector never crossed this minimum distance from the human hand position. So we undertook another case study of uh, Cobot for outpatient department, and in this case study, our aim was to design an affordable robotic system which can uh, provide uh, safer interaction between medical staff and patient. And it was inspired uh, by the present uh, COVID situation. And we uh, developed the system for both uh, within visual and beyond visual range operations. And uh, we also followed a user center design process involving medical staff from the early design stage. And we also wanted to keep this uh, system cheaper. And that's why we used, uh, did not use a ready made robotic arm, rather, we uh, developed the system uh, in house. So this is a uh, quick video. So uh, it uh, shows the context of the work, and this is a sample operation of the work when the person and the patient are co-located. So he is controlling this robot through this video see-through interface, and he is taking temperature. And we developed a bespoke uh, end effectors which can activate this uh, legacy uh, temperature gun. So. Uh, that was one uh, contribution of the work that uh, we designed bespoke end effectors uh, compatible to legacy instruments so that a uh, health center deploying the solution uh, do not need to buy separate instruments for uh, this particular robotic system. And we also have a pulse oximeter where the, the person can uh, insert his hand and we can automatically press the button. And we also uh, trained uh, actual medical staff to uh, use this system themselves. And here again, uh, repeating that the patient and the doctor, they are co-located, but they are maintaining safe distance more than six feet uh, between themselves. And it is also possible to put a screen uh, in between them to keep the interaction even safer. So this is a visual inspection module, which we sometimes in medical term called FACES, that observing the face closely, which can indicate the presence of various uh, issues like jaundice, facial paralysis, sore throat, etc. And this is the remote operation where the patient and the doctor are not co-located. So the doctor is operating this robotic arm through this uh, VR model. And uh, even though he is using the VR model, uh, we put a canvas where we can see the real life image. And uh, when the doctor is inspecting the visuals, he can get the real life camera input inside the VR environment. But uh, the doctor can control the robotic agent with the hand controller of a VR headset. So here you can see that this guy he is controlling the robotic arm running this VR headset. He is uh, feeling like uh, sitting in the health center where the person is uh, located. But at the same time, uh, although it is uh, VR, but for the actual uh, 
physical examination, he can get the real camera feed within this VR environment. So here are some unique selling points of this uh, particular cobot that it was compatible with legacy instruments with through bespoke grippers and it's affordable, flexible that uh, robots workload is adjusted by adjustable by using different servo motors. So if we want to change any legacy instrument and uh, the whole system can be uh, adjusted for newer or different medical instrument just by changing the motors without changing the user interface part. And also we undertake uh, user studies or still undertaking user studies to getting the user acceptance. And all this is also safe in the sense like the previous example, the robot uh, in defector keeps a safe distance um, away from the uh, particular person in question or the patient. So with that, uh, I will uh, finish this lecture on this uh, cobot.